I'm Marin Alsop, and I've just been appointed chief conductor and curator of the Ravinia Festival, and I couldn't be happier. There haven't been that many um, female conductors, I have to say. Um, but for me, you know, growing up, I think, I think first, you know, it starts, of course, with our parents. My mom was a great role model, and she was a militant feminist, um, outspoken to the end, great cellist. And uh, then, you know, I, I really, really, really respect people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You know, the people that have broken through. When you're the first, you know, you're it's always the hardest role because um, I think people put a lot of their own baggage onto you. But I've always been drawn to women who, who have forged their own path. I recently met uh, a woman named Sylvia Kaduf, who's in her 80s now. You know, she's a, a Swiss conductor. And she broke all the barriers, and her first teacher was von Karajan. So her, she conducted the Berlin Philharmonic when she was like 20 years old. But during my formative um, days, you know, of study, I didn't even know she existed. That's another challenge is that women's stories are not preserved with the same kind of care and integrity. I've been very fortunate to be in a position to create opportunities for young women in the conducting field. And in 2002, I started a fellowship for young women conductors. And We've had 23 recipients, and 16 are now music directors. And they're all working, all of them. The greatest joy is not so much that feeling of being a role model, but of watching them have a community. Because I think that's something that's been really lacking for women, having a sense of safety and places where they can try things and make errors and not, not have to suffer consequences. Um, because without failure, there really can be no success. Studying with Leonard Bernstein was really, I mean, it was a, an incredible privilege, an incredible experience. But in, in addition to the musical and artistic dimension to it, um, watching him stand up for causes he believed in, watching him use music as a vehicle to express, um, I think, our human condition. That was really an inspiration for me, and I think it formed the, not only the musician I am today, but the human being I am as well. So I try, to, I try to use music in a way that connects to our 21st century audiences. This year, to celebrate Beethoven, of course it's his 250th anniversary, I'm doing a Global Ode to Joy project uh, taking the Ninth Symphony to six continents with 11 different orchestras with new texts created for the region where I'm going. So in South Africa, the te new text is in Zulu. And the themes are the same, of course, about unity and joy and, and coming together, tolerance, important issues for us today. But they're really from the perspective of the people that live there. I think that art needs to serve the public in an important way, um, not just to be comforting and familiar, but to push the envelope, you know, in terms of new music, music that's written today, that's challenging, that's about social activism, that's trying to speak to us and galvanize us to step up and take action. I think supporting um, living composers, uh, supporting music created today, also not being so rigid about what classical music is so that people don't feel so, so denied access, you know, that it's off-putting. And that's why I'm so thrilled about this appointment at Ravinia for me, because it's all about access. Musically speaking, of course, conducting the Chicago Symphony is always a treat. But I think the fact that uh, Ravinia is, is threading the season with this 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment is sort of an appropriate moment. And uh, we have the incredible Cynthia Erivo, who is doing a program called Legendary Women. And I'm conducting that. I'm really excited about that and working with her. 
And then I'm going to do um, a live film score to the silent film um, Jean d'Arc, Joan of Arc. Finally, um, the classical music world is talking about diversity and inclusion and gender equality. Uh, this is the first time I've heard any discussion about it. And it took many, many, many decades for this moment to come. But to me, it's the most exciting moment of all when we look to open the doors wide for participation from everyone and, and welcome, welcome people from all walks of life into the concert hall, onto the stage, into our orchestras. I think it's a really exciting moment.